500,000. 500,000. One half million. And I'm not talking about the fines of an ex-president. Been quite a phenomenal few weeks in the camera industry, and mainly that's been caused by the introduction of the new Fuji X100 V1, or let's call it 6. And this is a wildly popular camera. The 105 was so popular, back orders were still not being produced when they introduced the 106. Now it's gotten even crazier. It's been told that there's over a half a million orders for the Fuji X100 6. That's right, a half a million, a half a million cameras. I mean, start doing the math, try to figure this out. What is making this camera so successful? Well, I'm having a lot of fun with mine and let me show you how I have mine set up. I was lucky to get one on day one. I knew it was coming. Uh, anybody that was reading the rumor sites knew it was coming. So I uh, <laughs> told Robert's camera, that I wanted one. When they started taking orders, put my name on the top of the list, which is what they did, and I got mine on the day one. And I carry my Fuji, just like I did with my X100 5, in this little donkey bag. And I'm very happy to have this. So, essentially, let's talk a little bit about what makes this camera so popular. First off, I love this camera. I've got it decked out with a soft shutter release, a thumb rests in the back, and it's so light, so nice. It has a great screen on it that opens up in the back. You can set it up any way you want. It's got an optical viewfinder and an electronic viewfinder, which are great depending on how you want to do it, an electronic shutter and a mechanical shutter. But I think what draws most people to this camera is the fact that it's like, a traditional camera and we're seeing a lot of the people especially the younger generation that has been moving to film moving to this camera and there's several reasons why let's talk first big feature coming to this camera is a 40 megapixel sensor so that's a pretty good size sensor and you can do a lot with 40 megapixels the second big thing and this is huge in my opinion for this camera because it's been what's really been missing over the last few years is in-body image stabilization up to five stops. This means you can take this thing out into darker environments and shoot all you want. Uh, the autofocus is faster and it's just so much fun to work with. But what's attracting a lot of people to this are the film simulations. A lot of people are trying to get back to the nostalgia of film. Now we got a lot of people buying film cameras. That's evident by talking to the people at Profoto, which is a division of Roberts for used cameras, and the amount of used cameras specifically in film that people are buying and the amount of film being processed is pretty high and it's pretty phenomenal. Now a lot of those people take their film and scan it and then go into a digital uh, workflow, which is kind of cheating in my opinion. If you're going to shoot film, you might as well make prints on an enlarger and do it all the way. But that's a story for another day. But they like the look of film. And hey, the film has a certain kind of look. Frankly, I'm kind of glad we have the digital look because I think we can do a lot more with it. But I'm one that experienced the limitations of film during my younger days as a photographer. Uh, now this camera allows you to do a number of different film simulations and they're really good. So my camera is set up to be able to shoot RAW and JPEG, and I can also shoot any number of the different film simulations I want, and I can even do film simulation brackets, where I might want to do uh, Velvia or uh, Acros or any number of different ones and have three versions of the same shot uh, that I can choose from later as JPEGs. So the film simulations are one of the things that are attracting people. Also, a lot of people are getting tired of shooting on the iPhone. Well, the iPhone is really a good camera to shoot on, and many people use it, including me. I'm a big fan of the iPhone, especially the i15, iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is what I have. This camera is not much different in size. You can see it right there. But you've got all these different 
settings and things and you have a real camera and if you're carrying and walking around with a jacket you can just slip it in your pocket so it's kind of nice i use the peak design strap system so i have not only a neck strap which i can hook to it but i have what i use most of the time is a peak design wrist strap so i have a camera now that i can take with me anywhere in a go bag that I can shoot almost any kind of film simulation I want. And I love the RAW and I love Acros. Acros is a version of black and white. And they also give you uh, simulations for different filters. So if I'm outside, I might want to put a red on so I have a nice uh, dark uh, uh, sky with that. There are some other features in here. There's a neutral density filter you can put on. It's got really good video capabilities, although that's not the thing most people are using. Uh, when they're purchasing this camera it's just fun though and it's so fun that they've got a half a million back orders i hear based upon inside information that i have through various sources that fuji has moved all their production from japan to china for this camera and can produce approximately 15,000 cameras a month now they're going to take a long time at 15,000 cameras a month to meet a half million dollar camera back order if that's really the case. And uh, there's no reason not to expect it, especially when you talk to some of the camera stores and I've talked to Roberts and a few others and you know, they've got a lot of orders and a lot of back orders. And you take that from just one camera store and look at all the different camera stores there are and some of the bigger camera stores and then take that around the world. And you're talking a worldwide amount of about 500,000 cameras in back order. Wow, I mean, that's phenomenal. Anyway, to me, I'm happy about it. It means that people are getting back to doing photography. It means that they are enjoying taking pictures, enjoying the nostalgia of having the old film simulations to make a look any way they want, and they're just having fun. And isn't that what it's all about? And this camera is also very, very customizable. You can work with the menu system in this camera and customize to your heart's content. So uh, I was able to go in here. I spent a lot of time with the manual and looking at the previous settings that I had. And I went and made all sorts of cool settings in this camera. It also has a Q button, which means that when I'm in the shoot mode, I can go to a Q area, which is looking like that, and I can set it up and move quickly to different autofocuses, different settings, and so forth. It's really a lot of fun. And this camera doesn't have what you might consider like a aperture priority, a shutter priority, and a manual and so forth. It's all done by the combination of turning the dials. So if you turned all the dials to A, basically you'd be in what you normally would consider P. I set my shutter speed to A and my f-stop to 2.8, but my ISO to auto. Now basically I have a camera shooting at a shutter speed and uh, f-stops and so forth the way I want and then I can move into different things. So typically a lot of times I like to shoot especially outside or something in manual where I actually set the shutter speed and set my f-stop and I let the ISO handle the uh, environment and, and the lighting that's that's present. You can do all that pretty simply pretty quickly and you can do a lot of that by setting up different menus and different custom function buttons. This camera is so customizable it's ridiculous. Um, I most likely will do a video as I did with the previous camera, the uh, 105. Uh, you can look at that on my YouTube channel if you want um, and show you how I set my camera up. But right now I'm having a lot of fun and the only thing that I have a limitation of in that sense right now is the fact that RAWs aren't capable of going in the Lightroom yet, but I'm sure that's coming real soon. So anyway, just want to say 500,000. This camera is probably going to be the most popular camera ever produced. I think other camera manufacturers are looking at what's going on in this business and realizing that they might have to make some adjustments. You know, this is an upgrade worth buying, in my opinion. Uh, I know a couple of people said they should just stay where they are, but how can you argue with a 40 megapixel sensor and image body in, in body image stabilization? So th those were the two biggies for me. Plus they've given you one more new film simulation and it's just a lot of fun to work with. So anyway, just wanted to share a little bit about that. Wildly successful camera. It's going to be fun to see where it goes. I'm not finished talking about this camera. You'll hear and see more uh, about this camera in the future, but uh, right now, 
It's pretty amazing what you're hearing. And luckily I was able to get one of these cameras and I am going to be doing a bunch of shooting with it and report back to you on how and what I see. I'm gonna give an article where I show all the different film simulations and try to help you understand this camera better. I have some late breaking news. Since I started making this video and doing the initial editing, um, some things have really happened here with the uh, Fuji uh, X100 6 camera, or V1 as they would call it. And uh, they released a limited edition version of this camera. It cost approximately $400 more and I like sold out in two seconds. Uh, the U.S. got uh, 300 allocation, 300 units in their allocation, and uh, they were gone in a heartbeat. And of course, what happened was a lot of people bought several cameras at once and are trying to hawk them on um, eBay and such. There's actually been some reports of listings on eBay for this particular limited edition camera at $16,000. Most are selling for at least twice as much on eBay. And Fuji makes the uh, big deal that uh, they're going to go and after all these fraudulent guys and try to reclaim cameras and cancel shipping of cameras. And what they'll do is they'll take all the cameras that are left over and then have kind of like a raffle to see who in the order queue uh, can get one of the limited edition cameras. These cameras are still very hard to get. Um, I double checked all my numbers and of course everything ranges from over 600,000 down to 380,000 uh, back orders for this camera. Uh, that's coming from some of the sources for camera industry in, in China. Uh, we can take it all with a grain of salt if we want. There seems to be a lot of people agreeing that there's a 500,000 unit back order and they can produce 15,000 cameras a month. So it's going to be way into 2025 for some people that are ordering today uh, to possibly get this camera. I think it's remarkable that a camera can be so successful and my hat is off to Fuji for creating a really cool camera that really has taken a lot of people by storm. One of the things though that I have been watching closely, specifically on social media and Facebook and such where they have specialized groups for these cameras, is a lot of people are buying these cameras and getting on the group asking how to do a setup of the camera or you know, how do I uh, uh, make the autofocus work. Uh, so uh, the people buying this camera probably aren't all that accustomed to working with cameras that have the capabilities that this camera does. But nonetheless, they're selling and they're getting delivered to certain people and there's certain people that need to start taking some courses to understand how to take pictures. But that's probably part of the fun of it. So we'll watch this thing very carefully. I'll have more to say on the Fuji X100 6 camera in the future. For the time being though, this is Kevin Raber at PhotoPXL. Thanks for being part of this little family of ours and look for some more videos, working on certainly a number of them, and I'll see you next time.